In the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. A young man decided in the evening of, of one of his days to go to bed early. As, as he said that I'm going to have a busy day tomorrow, so let me just uh, go to bed early and wake up early. I have a, a big list of things to do tomorrow. Just have to go to the gym in the morning, go get my, my breakfast and coffee and run to work. There is like tons of tasks that are urgent and important to do. And I have to spend the, the nine hours that I'm supposed to spend. And I go back home, I'm supposed to cook for myself. And then I have other business to do with my masters. I need to study, I need to go out with my friends. That's a long day. So he decided to go to bed early. And as he went and slept, he found his dark room to be brightened all of a sudden. And an angel appeared to him. And he knew that this was an angel. And the angel told them one statement. He told them, tomorrow is going to be your last day. And as he was scared and surprised, he, was, he, he also was happy that he, he was seeing an angel. Anyways, he had to wake up. And it, it was a dream or a vision or possibly a nightmare. He, did, he didn't really know how to describe it, but he could not go back to sleep thinking of what I'm going to do for, the, for this day that could possibly be a message from God that this is my last day on earth. And what the church is doing in the last two weeks of the Coptic year is similar to this message from this angel. As we end the Coptic year, like this year is the year 1740 of the Coptic year, the church reads to us the gospel of the end of ages, the gospel of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the signs that are going to happen, and how, how can be ready to, to, be, uh, to meet with the Lord on that, on that same day of his second coming. So today we read this from Mark chapter 13, and next, next week we're going to read the same thing from another gospel from Matthew, just, just to engrave in our minds that today might be our last day. That's, that's an important an important uh, a principle that I need to think of and to live with. As St. John the Ladder once said, if you do not consider today the last day of your life, you might not live the day as you're supposed to live it. So if you are to live the day properly according to what God want, how God wants you to live it, then think of your day to be the last day. Like if you think of this liturgy, for example, to be your last liturgy, I assure you that you're going to be praying in a different way. If you think of your dealings with your family to be the last time that you're going to be dealing with them, you're going to be dealing with them in a different way. If you think that, that today is, is, is going to be your last day and you're going to work, you're going to be as honest as you possibly can. If, if, you, if you have an issue with someone, you're going to be running to solve it. If, you, if you're holding grudges, you're, uh, again, it's someone you're going you're gonna to be ready to let go because that's the last day anyways and you want to be ready to meet with the Lord. So in, 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 this, in this particular atmosphere of thinking, of meeting with the Lord, this was the question uh, that the disciples asked our Lord today. Uh, tell us when is going to be your second coming and what are the signs uh, that will happen before, before you come again. And the Lord assured them, well, you do not have to be concerned much about this because no one is going to know the time. But what you need to do is you need to be watchful. You need to be concerned about your own salvation because if someone goes to heaven today, if someone dies today, if, if Christ is coming tomorrow, or if Christ is coming in 100 years, or if Christ is coming in 3,000 years, it won't matter to him. Once his days on earth is, is done, 
then that's his basically that's his second coming day. That's that's his his last day uh, before he meets with with the Lord. All this like encourages all of us to to be ready for such a moment when we leave this flesh, when we leave this earth, and go and meet with the Lord. Uh, many times when we attend funeral, funerals and so and go just to like uh, offer respect and condolences to uh, sad families, we assume that these people who, are, who, who went uh, uh, away, those people who died, are in a category, and we are in a different category. Like this person died, I'm alive. That's two different people. I, I don't imagine myself, or at least most of us, we don't imagine ourselves to be in the place of the person who, whom we are uh, fair, fair, say, like bidding farewell to him while, while he's in his casket and going uh, like forever as, uh, as, per, as per the flesh. So if so, I may need to uh, consider this and be, and be ready and think of the time uh, where I'm going to meet with the Lord, w which could possibly be tonight or tomorrow. There is a chance, by the way, no matter how young you are or how healthy you are, there is a chance that any of us could be meeting with the Lord today. So uh, if so, it, it should be spiritually wise and smart to think of being ready always, like this man uh, whom we talked about, he decided to see, to see what, what I can do before I leave. Let me, let me be ready. And today I'm gonna give you some hints on how to be ready. And hopefully if, if you think of any uh, or all of such hints, hopefully that we're gonna have some sort of readiness and instead of having to be uh, drowned here in the business of this world and in the pleasures of it and in the riches of it without, without being ready at any point of time for our lives. First, if I am to be ready, I need to make friends with the Lord. I, meet, I, may, I need to be always walking with him. I need to have time with him every day. That's not being so religious or being someone who is like, uh, uh, Will, will devote himself to become a monk or anything. No, it's just the basic relationship between us and God. God created us because he loved us and he's expecting us to be in love with him as well. And he's, he's waiting for us every single day to talk to him, to, ha to spend some time with him. Unfortunately, many of us, we miss this all, as simple as it is and as, as common as it is, and we almost hear it in every, in every sermon and every time we read the Bible, but many of us miss this. Just give yourself some time with the Lord every day. That's, that's a necessity, that's not a luxury, that's not a, a complimentary thing that you're supposed, to be happy, you're supposed to be doing. Some time with God every day is a necessity for me to be able to spend the rest of my eternal life with Him. Like, imagine that I'm not gonna know the Lord here on earth. I'm not gonna experience being with him here, with him uh, here on earth. If I go to heaven and supposedly I'm gonna be in paradise with him, I'm gonna feel like a stranger because I have never experienced him here on earth before. And if so, let us, let's start eternal, eternal life from here. Let's, let's start having an experience with the Lord every single day, having quiet time with him, talking to him, every single day, devoting time uh, to him, uh, to, to talk uh, freely with him, to vent out my, my concerns before him, to, to ask him for things, to thank him for things, to repent before him, to, to make a friendship with him. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's, that's needed as, as, uh, if, as if uh, I, I, I have to go through this in order for me to make a relationship with the Lord. Uh, as, as it's written uh, in the book of Proverbs that, that the Lord is our closest friend, saying that uh, there is a friend who sticks closer than, than a brother. So if I am to, to st start to making myself ready, I need to be friend with the Lord. And as uh, Enoch in the, in the early days of the Old Testament in, in Genesis chapter 5, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. 
like he started to be so friend so in friendship with the Lord so in love with the Lord to the point that the Lord said well let's be together forever and and he he took Enoch right while he was in the flesh he, he took him right to heaven because he walked with the Lord so number one if you are to be ready and if I am to be ready we need to put in mind that I need to have good connection with the Lord every single day uh, I need to share love with him uh, on a personal basis every single day and uh, another thing that I may need to think of uh, if I I might be leaving tonight or, or tomorrow or very soon which is possible I need to start to clean up uh, my life I need uh, if God has given us a chance until today uh, then God is telling me and is telling you start to clean up your life Yes, uh, everyone has his own sins, but the, the, there is a way to get rid of all this that's called repentance. Just, just instead of insisting on doing what I, what I am doing uh, always, instead of insisting on my, on my weaknesses and sometimes being proud of it, you don't need to do this to yourself. There is a way to clean up, which is called repentance. Just say sorry to the Lord and go confess your sins. If today is your last day, I, I'm quite sure that you, if you have a father of confession, you're going to meet with him. You're going to tell him, well, I, I need just to clean up everything before I go. And if so, uh, there is no point of just keeping, uh, keep doing what I'm doing if I'm enjoying my, my addictions, if I'm enjoying my pleasures, if, uh, if I'm uh, into a uh, wrong relationship or so. This cannot be continued this way. And as it's written in Galatians chapter 5, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If I am to be for him, I need to crucify my passions and desires. Uh, if I have such prideful heart that says, well, such words are not for me. I am good. I never murdered anyone. I never committed adultery. I'm better than others. And you look down at others and you assume that you're smarter. You assume that you're more spiritual. You assume that you're more righteous. Be careful. Because, because that's, that's a big sin that's called the prideful heart. And that's, that's a sin that could, could cause me and you to be totally separated from God here on earth and there in heaven. Uh, as it's written in Philippians chapter 2, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, uh, but in lowliness of mind, let each, esteem, let, let each esteem others better than himself, as it's in, in Philippians chapter 2. If you have hatred in my heart, if I, if I am holding grudges, if I'm judging others, you name it, whichever sin, you are you are enjoying or you are under it's time today to fight against it's, it's time today to seek the grace of god and say lord i don't want to continue in this let's say go there tonight and i become embarrassed before you that uh, that i didn't do my part in resisting living in such in such sinful life and the right hand thief who was crucified beside our Lord Jesus Christ learned this, this fact that it was his last day and based on this he acted well. He, he told the Lord, please Lord, I want to be with you tonight, today in your kingdom. And the Lord told him, today you're going to be with me in paradise. He was accepted right away as he learned this, this good lesson of understanding that this is my last day. And do not assume that this is because he was crucified and he knew that he's going to die because there was another thief on the left-hand side of the Lord who did not get it. Although he was dying, he did not get it. And unfortunately and sadly, I see people on the bed of death and they don't get it. Like a, a, someone told me a few years ago about a, a cancer patient who, on, the, on, the, on the bed of death and it was about a few days to go. And he, he went and told them, like, we have a priest in the church, he can come and pray for you and take your confessions. And the man said, no. I've, I've been separated from God my whole, my whole life, and I don't want to connect with him now. Can you imagine? 
because he didn't get such concept of, of being in his last day every single day. So first, connect with the Lord, and second, repent your sins. And if you are to be ready, and if I am to be ready, I need to live according to his ways, not according to my ways. Like many of us live according to our own minds, and many others, they live according to what the, what the world tells them to do. They just imitate others in their, in their way of living, in their way of drinking, in their way of uh, partying, in their way of uh, dressing up. They imitate others, even in their principles and in their way of thinking. And they don't, they don't know that there is a way for, for children of God to, to live their lives, which is the way of, of His, the way of God Himself. Such way is written in the Bible. And if I am to, to have uh, such a relationship with my Bible, I'll be able to put what the Lord said into actions. I, I, I will be able to live with it. Unfortunately, many people, they know about the Bible, and some people, they know knowledge of the Bible, and not many people are applying the Bible in their, in their own daily life, as they assume that it's, it's just good enough for me to be memorizing good verses and sharing it with my friends on, on social media. That's, that's, not a, that's not it at all. Like if you are to read the Bible, you're reading it for your own benefit. Just, just you may live with it. That you may, that you may turn it into into actions, in in your life and in my life. Uh, uh, when the Bible says, "Do not return evil for evil," you don't return evil for evil. It's not that you read this and you're happy with it, and then when someone harms you, you just give him double the harm that he's causing to you. When when the Bible says, uh, uh, like, uh, bless those who persecute you and pray for them, you're supposed to do so. You're not supposed to be cursing them or bad-mouthing them or talking and judging and gossiping about them. You're not living the Bible this way. So if I am to, to be ready, I need to live the Bible. I need to live according to what the Bible says. When the Bible says, uh, do good, lend, and hoping for nothing in return, when the Bible says, love your enemy, that's, that's not a, an advice or, or a suggestion. It's, it's, it's a kind of an order that God is telling his children to live with. And if I don't live with this, I'm, I'm not ready to meet with him because what I'm going to say to him as I meet with him. Uh, in Matthew chapter, chapter 25, the Lord talked about the moment where, where he's going to meet with people in his second coming. And he said, there are people who are going to come to me assuming that they have a great place in my bosom. And I'm going to tell them, well, I do not know you altogether. And there are other people who are going to come to me, and I'm going to tell them, come uh, to me, O blessed of my father, because, because I, I want to give you such such a great spot in my bosom. And the, two, the, the main difference between the two groups was that a group was just living the Bible, was doing according to what the Bible has to, has to, has to say, and others are just doing whichever they think is right. Those, uh, uh, as, as the Lord said, um, uh, I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me drink, I was a stranger and you took me in, and so on, actions. The Bible is basically actions that we do. And if we don't do such actions, we don't live the Bible and we're not ready, in fact. The last part in the Gospel of reading of today was uh, uh, an order again from the Lord. The Lord said, watch therefore, be watchful, because in fact it could be seriously your last day and you don't want to lose such chance be watchful, as the Lord has ordered us to do today. Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't go uh, after the long week and go, and go to work and, and resume life as norm. Tell yourself, this might be my last day, and start acting uh, accordingly. Uh, be watchful, do not postpone your repentance. Be watchful, do not, do not delay or ignore a good relationship, a good daily relationship with the Lord. Uh, be uh, watchful and put the Bible 
uh, into actions in your life. May God's name be, be glorified in his church forever and ever. Amen.